Ms. Nina, salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Sister Mars, how are you? I am good, alhamdulillah. And thank you so much for joining us, really. I know you've been really busy, a packed trip here in the UK. So thank you for joining us. Alhamdulillah, thank you for having me. And thank you for being here as well, mashallah. It's just such a beautiful building with beautiful views. It really, really is. And for this spread as well, alhamdulillah, yeah, it's, it's looks amazing. good, right? It does. Mashallah. Yeah, I think that's crab, so I'm kind of thinking, you know. Mm-hmm, right? <laughs> Yum, yum, yum. <laughs> well, I'm so interested because you've got such an amazing life and you reaching in Islam. This is the first thing that I would love to hear more about is your journey mm-hmm. in Islam. Would you share that with us? Okay, mashallah. Well, um, I don't know how long we've got, um, but I guess uh, to put it in, in a nutshell, uh, I, I'm a born Muslim. However, I did not practice Muslim. Uh, I did not practice Islam for for a long time because I was very much pulled into um, the dunya, you know, the love of music and entertainment. And so when I was a young girl, I was exposed to MTV. I was exposed to a lot of these things. And um, I grew up wanting to be, you know, a rapper, a singer, a dancer. I wanted to be Janet Jackson, basically. Who is Muslim now? Who is Muslim now? Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Um, but that was all I wanted. And so I, I lived my life aiming for that. You know, every, everything that I did in school and outside school had something to do with music and entertainment and dancing and training. Um, and so I lived my life for at least half of it, um, you know, um, basically striving for that. And so... Islam was not my religion. Entertainment and music was my religion at the time. So I lived and I strived and I died for it, basically. And so, uh, alhamdulillah, you know, I had a dream of becoming uh, an artist on MTV. You know, throughout the years, I, I worked that, that way. And alhamdulillah, I achieved that dream when I was in my early 30s. Alhamdulillah. And, um, you know, living a life in entertainment and music, there comes a point where, you know, it came to a point where I was like, wait a minute, what am I doing? I still don't feel content. I still feel like as if I'm chasing something. And even though I, I achieve it, there's still something else that's missing inside. I still feel empty. Mm-hmm. And when there's no, um, when Allah is not in my life at that time, and it was just chaos. Like, not at all. Like... I mean, you know, I'd be, I pray, and I, you know, I probably, you know, fast during Ramadan, but that's it, you know. And then I go back to my own life, and it really, you know, was, it was, you know, YOLO. You only live once. You know, I was partying, I was doing all that stuff, you know, um, everything that was related to the entertainment industry, to music and hip hop, and you know, just all of that stuff. So in my early twenties, I became depressed because of that lifestyle, and it came to a point where I thought I was literally going to die, and I think. In that low moment, that was when I, I subliminally called out to Allah. I didn't know that I needed help, but I think my heart was just beating enough to call out to Him. You know, you know when you're crying and you're alone and you're just 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 calling for someone to help you, and it's Allah who comes, and He's always been there. And so that was the beginning of my hijra journey. Uh, I would call it a spiritual hijra, from. Just wanting to become a healthy, good human being, you know, a good daughter, a good sister, a good friend, letting go of, you know, the addictions that I had with dunya, you know, these different vices that, you know, we all have. Um, and so I wasn't a practicing Muslim yet. I was still, you know, seasonal, I guess you, you would call it. Um, but I think uh, towards my mid to late 20s, that's when I started to practice Islam more. Um, because um, the pinnacle, I think, of my hijra was when my brother passed away, uh, my older brother. Um, and he was in his 40s. And um, when, when, when that happened, it was like, you know, uh, uh, a, a brick was, you know, somebody just kind of punched me in the head and it was like, whoa, reality hits. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, death is real. Mm-hmm. Death is real. At any time, Allah can take your life away, my life away, someone you love, you know, his life away. And, you know, I started to think about, you know, life. What is the purpose of life? Where is my brother now? You know, Allah, you took him away. Where is he now? What is he doing? I had no idea. And uh, I thought about my life as well. Like, you know what? I've been living this YOLO life and, not, and I can't live this way anymore and, not t- and take life for granted, you know? And so, subhanAllah, through this tragedy, 
I was able to find myself. I was able to find Allah. And it actually, you know, there was so much hair that came out of, out of this, this, um, this, this uh, difficulty. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. It brought, us, it brought me closer together to my family. And it got me closer to Allah. And I started to slowly learn about Islam again. And then uh, the next uh, aha moment after that uh, was when I went for Hajj with my husband and my parents uh, in 2013. And I think that was when I learned what it meant to be a real Muslim. Because subhanAllah, um, you know, uh, when you go for Hajj, everyone is in the ihram. You know, you're, you're there on the plain of Arafah and you see everybody, you know, making dua, making tawbah. You know, everybody is uh, emotional. Everybody is asking for uh, forgiveness from Allah, making dua. And I'm observing everyone. And I'm thinking, subhanAllah, this is what it is to be Muslim. You know, we're at the end of the day, nobody. And we're all the same. And all we want is to, you know, make it to Jannah. And all we want is Allah's mercy and forgiveness, you know, and his um, rida, like his, his, and his countenance. And that was the day I learned how to make tawbah as well. You know, before that, it was, I, I never did make tawbah, you know, and I didn't know really what my true purpose was. And subhanAllah, um, I think that was the day when Allah, Allah taught me how to, you know, break the ego and, and, and you know, submit. Because being a Muslim, that, what, that is what Islam is all about. Being a Muslim is a person who submits completely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I told myself that, ya Allah, I, I said to Allah, Ya Allah, I want to be Muslim now. I want to, I, I, I don't, it's not about me anymore. It's not about how I look. It's not about, you know, what I want. It's about what you want, Allah. And I just want to do what you want me to do. And, and I, I think that's when the journey of ilm, the journey of, you know, really connecting with Allah began as his slave. It still is a work in progress, definitely. You know, that was 2013. Um, but uh, alhamdulillah, when I came back, and of course, you know, for those of you who don't know, I, I was, again, from the music industry. I was at the pinnacle of my career. I just finished, you know, doing a music video with Flo Rider. I, I, you know, I had a song with Jay Park. You know, I've been in the industry for a long time, and I came back, and, you know, I decided to just quit everything. I just said, you know, I, t I called my manager, and I said, look, you know, I think I have to stop. You know, I can't come back from Hajj and then continue my music and dancing and, and the way that I was. And alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, you know, Allah made it easy. You know, my friends and my family, they were very uh, supportive and understanding. Um, and, and it was a very, you know, it was a very, I'm saying magical. It was such a beautiful time for me, I think, um, you know, to let go of that. Mm -hmm. I worked so hard my entire life from since I was a kid to my 30s to just be that star, Yes. you know? And now, and then, and then um, you know, I told my parents, you know, look, I just want to quit. And my dad was like, are you sure you want to quit? You fought for this. You fought us for this. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, yes, I'm sure, dad. And then, you know, parents, of course, they just want to make sure that, you know, you know you, you're, doing the, the, you're doing it for the right reasons. And I said, yeah, I said, dad, I want to do this for Allah. I want to change. And he said, okay, then, you know, you have my support. You have my love, alhamdulillah. So yeah, I mean, in a nutshell, yeah. in a nutshell, that's, that's what happened. And I think, I hope that my story uh, can relate to a, a lot of the youth today. Yes. Because, you know, today, like now we're in 2022, we have the same problems. We have the same vices. Mm -hmm. You know, we're so pulled into the culture of music and entertainment, you know, partying, drugs, alcohol. It's taking the mind of our youth away from, from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. And sometimes for some people it's too late. Sometimes they go through life and then you don't know when Allah will pull your life away and you might not have the chance to return to Him. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, when I share with you my story and, and for everyone who's watching on Islam channel, you know, I pray, you know, um, for everyone to look deep inside themselves, you know, to, to, you know, inshallah, make the hijrah, make that change before it's too late, inshallah. I think, I think a lot of people find it, like, especially in today's youth, right, um, this attachment to the dunya, and especially exacerbated by social media because they feel that they need to have this instant uh, verification, um, to, to, to have fame, to have that kind of, you know, what would you say, like having gone through stardom in, in like in, in that in the music industry what would your tips be to be able to go back to Allah and not to
be so attached to the dunya. No, subhanAllah. Um, I think most importantly is uh, for, for the youth, and I would also give advice to the parents as well, to give you know, really good foundation of Islam. I think uh, we will be exposed to music, we will be exposed to this kind of things, but it's important to make sure that we, we can navigate ourselves and just, just come back, you know? And I think in order to do that, um, first and foremost is your foundation. Make sure you have a solid foundation because you forget you can always return, right? Number two, friends. Just to make sure that you have good friends around you um, and know that, you know, your friends is not your, um, your God. You know, when we grew up as kids, you know, like I, my friends were like, you know, they, they were everything. everything. <laughs> you know, they were everything. Like, okay, if you jump, I jump. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. If you jump, like, okay, I, I ain't jumping. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna pull you back with me. So we gotta have good friends yeah. that remind of us all, of us, uh, us of Allah. And also, I think number three is, um, you know, our environment. Um, in order for us to kind of have that balance, you know, we have to make sure that we are in good environments as much as we can. Mm -hmm. I know it's it's not easy, especially for the youth, um, but I think. Inshallah, if we're able to have that from a young age, you know, inshallah, we'll be able to be, you know, pull, pull ourselves back. And again, I think most importantly is our connection to the Quran. Mm -hmm. If we have that strong connection from a young age, inshallah, um, you know, we won't get so lost. You know, the thing with me is that I, I disconnected from the Quran from a young age. You know, I started learning at eight or nine and then I stopped for a long time. And that's when the music came in and took mm -hmm. over my life. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's hard to have that, you know, it's, it, it is a battle. It definitely is a huge battle. And I know a lot of people, even adults I know now, are still struggling as well mm -hmm. with that. Um, but I think at the end of the day, never never stop, you know, making dua to Allah and just hold on to Him, mm -hmm. you know, because only He's the one who can pull you back from wherever you are, whichever level you're at in terms of your addictions to dunya. Yeah. You know, subhanAllah. Yeah. So, and you know, I think also don't, don't, you know, for those of you watching, if you're having like real serious issues with addictions to dunya, mm -hmm. ask for help. You know, ask a scholar, ask an expert, ask a counselor, don't be shy. Mm -hmm. um, and, and just go for it, you know. So you don't have to go through it alone. alone. No. Yeah. And I think a lot of people think that it's just them and maybe they're in denial as well, that they're addicted to the dunya. And, because we're surrounded by it. Yes, right? we are. Yeah, subhanAllah. But it's quite rife. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. Yeah. But I think, yeah, it's, it's the child, it's the teenager, it's the parents as well. The parents uh -huh. too have to uh, do their best to kind of, you know, um, groom and, 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 you know, guide the, the, the child as well, inshallah. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, hot topic. Hot topic? Hijab. Okay, hijab. The journey, you know, when, when you decided, because it's quite a big deal, isn't it? It's not just a cloth that you put over your head. It's, this is the identity, This you're, you're saying something here. Mm -hmm. Tell us about your hijab journey. Well, uh, the hijab journey came together with my hijra, spiritual hijrah journey. Uh, coming back from Hajj, I decided to keep my hijab on uh, because there was one moment in, uh, during Hajj where I accidentally left my room without my hijab on. And there was like, I think there were like, there was two men outside. And then I felt naked. For the first time I felt naked, I was like, oh my God, I'm not wearing my hijab. And I ran back into the room for the first time ever in my life. And so that was the moment I knew I was like, okay, I think I'm ready. Like, I can do this. Mm -hmm. And then I quickly called my friends who were already wearing hijab and I was like, hey, you know, what style's cool? What do you think will suit me? And I got excited about it. I was watching like some tutorials on YouTube. And then I came home and I, I, I didn't announce it yet to the media. Mm -hmm. um, I, and, I, and, and when I posted it on social media after two to three weeks, and I think that was when, you know, people started to know. Um, but I think, that was, I think, for anyone's hijab journey, I think it's really important to take that time away from people, away from, you know, media or anything like that, so that you can really just solidify your intention and your purpose of why you're wearing the hijab. I, I believe that if anyone does anything for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether it's wearing the hijab, whether it's praying five times a day, you know, um, doing any da'wah work, if you're doing it for Allah, inshallah, the mission, and, and uh, you doing it will, will, be, will be forever, yeah. you know? You won't have too many problems. You won't, you won't be able, I mean, you won't be, you know, you won't kind of like take it off, take it on, uh, uh, take it off and put it on again. Yeah. You know, I think if the intention is right, inshallah, it's gonna be good. 
The problem comes when we start doing things not for the sake of Allah. Yeah. Like, I'm going to wear the hijab because my parents told me to mm-hmm. do so. Mm-hmm. I'm going to wear the hijab because my husband told me to do so. Mm-hmm. And if I do it that way, then I think, you know, it will just be easy for me to take it off. Yeah. If something happens, like I have a problem with my husband or I have a problem with my friends or my family, it's, then I'm just like, oh, why should I wear the hijab, you know? Mm-hmm. But if it's for Allah, inshallah, mm-hmm. it, will, it will stay on forever, inshallah. inshallah. Yes, so, so that was my thing. I think I just wanted to make sure that it was, it was for Allah, you know. Um, on my Zoom, I have this picture uh, that reminds me of, of what I should do. And, and the quote that I see every single day when I do my meetings is, do it sincerely for Allah. <laughs> so it's just a reminder of, of the intention of everything that we do, inshallah. So, yeah, that it will be lasting until Jannah. And you are such an inspiring person inshallah and you've got tell us about kalbi yes kalbi because this is it's amazing so tell us about it share with us our viewers alhamdulillah so yeah kalbi is why we're here and kalbi means my heart and i was inspired to uh, develop an, an islamic app uh, through this ta'lim al-quran program that i was doing i was learning uh, the understanding of Quran from tafsir and, and Arabic and all that. And I remember my teacher telling me that uh, when it comes to knowledge, knowledge is nothing if you don't act upon it and if you don't share it. And I thought to myself, well, you know, subhanAllah, Allah has given me a platform. He's, he's giving me this knowledge that I'm learning right now ever since my Hajj. And I'm like, I love sharing knowledge. It's just one of those things that I love to do. And Kalbi is an extension of that. And I was just thinking to myself, like, what is the best way to, to get this knowledge out there, mm-hmm. right? To inspire people and it's media and technology. Mm-hmm. That's the best way, like it's mm-hmm. instant. Uh, and so I thought, okay, well, let's do this app. I'm a student of knowledge. I would love to have an app that has everything in it. Quran, dua, prayer times, you know, inshallah in the future, more, you know, breakdowns for word for word and things that, you know, maybe Islamic students will, will, will love. Um, and I, I really wanted, to do that mm-hmm. and to have Sirajaria and to do the da'wah as well. Yeah. Um, and so I thought to myself, okay, why Kalbi? Kalbi is because at the end of the day, it's about my heart. Mm-hmm. And I want people to be inspired to, to get back to Allah, you know? And because Allah at the end of the day will look at your heart and your, your intentions, your heart and your actions. Yeah. Not your wealth, not how beautiful you are, <laughs> but it's those things that he's gonna look at. Like when we die, that's it. Mm-hmm. SubhanAllah. So our tagline is ignite your heart with the light of Iman. And when, when people use the app, we just want them to be, um, you know, inspired inside, inside their heart, you know, for them to, to reflect a lot, for them to just, you know, reconnect with what fills their heart with Iman. And that is, you know, the good stuff, Quran and all that. So then I called a good friend of mine, Nadia, because uh, I... To be honest, women, women in the tech industry, there's not many women in the tech industry, but she's one who is, and she just happened to be my good friend. Yes. So I called her up and we're like, okay, well, let's do this. And Alhamdulillah, you know, um, she, mashallah, planned the blueprint. And then Alhamdulillah, here we are today. Yeah, that's yes. amazing. Alhamdulillah. Which brings me to, what would you say to little girls, young girls, to all women about like, you know, being, empowered and doing what they want to do and still have their firm beliefs as well what would you say what would your advice be yeah mashallah so yes you know being a muslim woman uh you can do anything as long as it's within the sharia laws um and to to not give up you know there there is always an opportunity for us to to do well and you know mashallah islam honors us that way you know we're able to to reach the stars, mashallah, in dunya and akhirat. So I would tell like our young girls out there to believe in themselves, to never give up, and to just to make sure that have your priorities straight, make sure that Allah is number one in your life, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then your parents, and then, you know, everything else, you know? So once your priorities are straight, inshallah, you can just, you can, you can do whatever you, well, not do whatever you want, no, 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 but you can be whoever you want, uh, and most importantly, pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So yeah, don't give up and believe in yourself. Ms. Nina, I think we've got other guests coming yeah, to I see know. you today to Sorry, celebrate thank you so, your so success. Much of your time, mashallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you reach more and reward you for everything that you do. Ameen, ameen. Jazakallah khair. Alhamdulillah. Thank you thank so you much for, for joining me. us. Thank you. Alhamdulillah.